Oh, hey. I was just helping this pair of loons work something out using a method Dr. Joe taught me. Did you know the male courts the female with a tender, bewitching melody? Sometimes, during the peak of mating season, I like to come down here with a cup of coffee and some leather work and just listen. Anyway, I better get back to this. Last time at Brawny Academy. Thank you, Brawny Man. The guys got a private therapy session with Dr. Joe. I hide my emotions. Try not to do that. Now I got a question for you. And Alfonso revealed he has a disturbing secret. I don't want them to think I'm a traitor or that they can't trust me. But first, let's check in with the other guys. Do you know you're handsome? No. No? No, I don't think of it that way. That's a rotten thought. I want you to go home and do a little work on yourself about that kind of thing. Okay. It affects your self-esteem. You're a handsome man. Thank you. And you look very sweet. Now then, do you know what to do to make your wife more fulfilled? I want to do something special with her and something else comes up and, and we just don't do anything. I want to make her happy every day. Now, let's put this hat on you. I want you to lean into me and I want you to flirt. Once upon a time, you caught your wife. Flirt with her. Wink at me. Wink at me again. All right, all right. That's, that's the kind of stuff, all right? A lot of body language. Leaning into her when you talk to her. Being present. She's missing you a lot. Okay, and that gets you, doesn't it? Did you know she missed you so much? I miss my wife. That's okay. We'll be in this marriage forever, and you know, I'm gonna be working on this uh, to be closer and to be more romantic forever, absolutely. I know you to be a social butterfly, she told me. Yes. You go to parties, and mm, she says you spend more time with the people at the party than you do with her. Well, that's why we're going to the party, so we can socialize. But we don't socialize. We don't, she socializes a, a bit. She wants more of your attention. <laughs> Everybody does. But now her complaint to me was that you belong more to the party than you do to her. Now, I don't want you to argue with me. Perceptions and feelings are what they are. And yeah. if she feels that way, she damn well believes it. Yeah. And so do something to demonstrate to her that, come on, I brought you to the party and you're the one I want to dance with and you're the one I want to be with. And I want you to know that as a professional, that I saw a lot of sadness in your wife. Really? Yes, I did. I surely did. And you need to know that. You got a sad chick on your hands over there, and you're off, you know, social butterflying around. Or Pay attention. Be aware. Be alert. We don't have an issue with love here. We have some, some kind of bad behavior. My thing is to make people laugh. And my wife is feeling sad. Yeah, that's, that bothers me. I have talked to Mia. Mm hmm OK. Just to make sure that you and I are on the same plane here about what her complaints are. We have spitting. Right. That's behavior, son. And I, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, how we develop behavior. Sure. The first thing that I want you to know about spitting is that it starts with a thought. OK? Your wife tells me is that there's a three-part series to this thought. It's <laughs> snort, hark, and spit. Sure. All right. So the thought comes first, then you behave, which is the spitting. This behavior becomes a, a habit. Obviously, you know mm -hmm. you had that, but it's stinking thinking. So we start believing in that. And belief systems, man, they're really hard to change. And you've been asked not to spit. Does it bother you? It bothers me that it bothers her. It doesn't bother me. Okay. If you do this for Mia, it won't last long because it's not yours, it's not from within. I've realized that there's the little things that I've been hanging on to. I love my wife more than those things. I can swallow my pride. Nah, ma'am, Dr. Joe, if I can call you Dr. Joe. Now I got a question for you. Okay. I've been sent here by Brawny as sort of a plant. 
I was sent to be sort of a negative role model. Oh. Tonight, I have to reveal to them that I'm actually not sent here with the rest of them. And we've grown together, and the boys love me. I love the boys. And now I got to tell them I don't want I don't want them to think I'm a traitor or that they can't trust me. It's really important to me, to tell you the truth. So you have anxiety? Yeah, a little bit. I don't want it to be a sensitive thing, but I got a feeling it's going to be one, and I don't want it to be. And I think that's my fear. I'd rather say a joke and laugh it off. I'm better at that. That's how I handle things. But what I saw in you were some mists in your eyes. The smoke from the fireplace, I don't believe a million that. things. I don't believe that. That's a bunch of crap. This is going to be hard for you, and that's okay. Well, what would you imagine? That this is going to get up and be a big joke? I think that's, that, that's unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, these are men you've grown to love, and yeah. I think that you just say, you know, this is who I am, this is why I've done it, with the greatest sincerity of the outcome. I fear this moment coming up. I fear their reactions. I'm going to try not to laugh it off, but I know me, I'm going to find a joke in it. So how was it, guys? Good. Good. Very good. I hope that I've been beneficial to each and every one of you. Go home. Do what you said you are going to do. And if I've kicked you in the butt, remember that's still a step forward. <laughs> that's right. Okay? Thanks, Dr. Joe. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Now that you know what to fix and what not to fix, we're going to start working on fixing your cells. I'm going to give you the opportunity to release those inner demons. I want you to write down on a sheet of this brawny paper towel a bad habit that you think your wife or girlfriend would like you to stop. Think about it carefully and how you would change it. Then hold on to it. We're going to need it for later. <laughs> Gentlemen, enter the ring of fire. I summoned you here tonight because not only are you going to burn this symbolic recliner, but you're going to rid yourselves of those bad habits which have been affecting your relationships. Tonight, I'm going to ask each one of you to step up here, read your bad habit aloud, crumple it up, and toss it into the flame. No, oh, not the chair, Bronny, not the chair. Man, not the chair. Not the chair, Bronny. Anything. Ugh. Buck, I'd like you to start us off. Come on, Buck. Got it, Buck. We're with you. My name is Buck. I am emotionally unavailable. I will come out of myself and share in life with Jennifer. I will be aware of her and my environment and my actions. Buck McCombs. Greg, you're next. I am a self-centered, selfish, controlling, unattentive individual. I plan to listen to my loved one and be more understanding and caring for her needs. My name is Matthew. I'm a man that needs to accept my flaws and change them to better our relationship. I'll also think before I act and take into consideration my wife's thoughts and feelings. My name is Roland. I am one who is not very emotional. I plan to change that by talking with my wife more about what is bothering me and listen to her about her failings and what is bothering her. Michael, you're next. My name is Michael. I'm a man who does not help out much around the house. I would change that as soon as possible. I would do more to help every day and every night and to show some more emotional support to my lovely wife, Andrea. Barkley. I need to complete tasks that I start but do not finish. If I focus on the task at hand and prioritize, then I have more time to enjoy with my beautiful wife and our children. Alfonso. I've got something to confess. I'm not who you think I am. My name is Alfonso, but I wasn't sent here by my girlfriend. I was sent here by the brawny man. I was a test for y'all. 
You know how everybody back home has that buddy who makes him get out of line? Well, I was that test, because if you can stay in line with me, you can stay in line when you go back home. And I'm not alone. This is my buddy Tom. Guys, I wasn't sent here by my girlfriend either. I was sent here by the Bonnie man. Keep you motivated. But in the long run, I realized that you guys don't need motivation. In fact, you guys were motivating me. And you guys are inspiring me. You guys are all a great group of guys, and I'm so glad to have gotten to know you. Thanks, guys. I know this is difficult, but Tom and Alfonso were just preparing you to become better men, which is what Brawny Academy is all about. You've inspired me. And in fact, you're all winners in my book. So tonight, you're all going back to the winner's cabin. I don't think I've ever been so deceived. I feel betrayed. I mean, that's, I'm not one to give my trust out. Matthew, I know you have t trouble trusting people, and you had trouble trusting me. It's not made up. Everything I say is real. Those are like your, your bottom line, your goal. All right, the reason I was sent here by the brawny man is I represent the temptation. Whenever you guys are supposed to do the right things by your wives or by your children, I'm the one who says, let's go to the bar instead. And instead of telling your wife, look, I'll make sure I stop by the grocery store, I'm the guy who says, don't worry, you can get the groceries tomorrow. Let's go to the bar, let's go shoot a game of pool. Stuff that's deep to our women isn't that deep to us. I'm your bad buddy, and if you could clean up your act with me here, then you can clean up your act with anybody at home. I hope you're all right with, with, with this buck, you know, I mean, you push me. Oh, I, 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 I felt bad. <laughs> Don't feel bad because this has shown me a lot about who I am. <sighs> and I just appreciate it because you always go through life as a man wondering how much you can take and what you're going to be like under pressure and how you're going to function. No, oh, you've been through a lot. Yeah. You've been through a lot. I can do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they made us do anything that we wasn't willing to do. The truth is, that was me 100%. It was, it was. That was me. I can't, everything I say is from my heart. That's Were you really scared of animals? I'm terrified of animals. <laughs> yeah. I've never owned, check my record, I've never owned a dog, cat. Only thing I've owned is a fish. Oh. <laughs> I never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you, little man. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, you guys made the trip just as much enjoyable as everyone here. I think you guys have learned just as much as we have out of yeah. this because there's no way you could have gone through this process alone. Yeah. I mean, well, we got to find out who these informants really are. Oh no! You got to hide them. them. <laughs> we'll stay. We'll shake them down. <laughs> we'll find like the out. Of that. Check them for wires before we talk. Oh man. <laughs> Thank you.